Hi guys, this is Donna with Love Rocks, and we're back again this week with another gnome. This is our little gnome with a rain jacket. I hope you enjoy it. Before we get started, of course, thank you, thank you so much for all of you who have subscribed and come out to support our channel. And those of you who have not, please subscribe. Um, if you subscribe and comment, then you'll be put in the drawing for this rock. And uh, you will also be notified anytime there's a new video that comes out. So I hope that you enjoy the video. And I hope most of all that you get some time to try to paint something. So let's get started. Um, on this one, I did um, take the time to video the sketching. I've had several people that wanted to see how I sketch out my uh, different rocks. And so I did take the time to show you how to sketch out this, this particular rock. Now, I won't guarantee that I'll do that on every one because it does take up a lot of the video, but hopefully this will give you some uh, ideas about how I sketch it and where I lay things in. Of course, you can always change any part of these rocks. Um, you can change the hat, you can change the nose, you can change the direction that he's standing. Uh, this one's standing specifically straight forward, but you can move it in any direction you want. Also, I'm going to sketch him with an umbrella. You don't have to do an umbrella. You could do something different. Uh, it just seemed appropriate with spring coming on. And so I did sketch this little guy with an umbrella. Um, I didn't put a lot of extras on here. If you follow me at all, you know that I really try to keep my rocks as simplistic as possible. So uh, he'll be holding a little flower, you know, for spring. And there'll be a little tiny bit of grass down by his feet. But other than that, I really just want to be able to focus on the gnome and uh, his outfit. And, and just laying in the basics of the of the character on the rock so that you can see how to do that. Um, I use the same basic structure every time I do my gnomes, as long as it's facing forward. And then from that point, um, I add or subtract whatever I'm gonna put on him or you know what kind of background or if there's gonna be added items around him. This video I changed up a little bit and I put all the the paints that I'm going to be using at the very beginning. I'm hoping that that makes it a little bit easier uh, for people to see what was used, um, give them an idea of, of what they need to go get if they want to follow the same uh, color pattern. I also put a picture of the brushes that I use. I use several different brushes, but these are the Benicis right here that I use. Um, and then I've got two little no-name brushes um, that I've cut down so that I've got uh, a line brush. It's the one on the right. And then the other one's just kind of a brush that I use for filler. I wanted him to be really bright and cheery for spring. Put on that rain hat and uh, rain coat and then some galoshes. So I, I think you'll enjoy this one. Um, let's see, we, this one, I, it, it really didn't take that long to do, um, but there was quite a bit of shading on him. You know, the more I do a specific, um, type of painting, the, the better I find ways of doing things. So, uh, the last couple of gnomes that I've done, because I do them more than I do anything else. I found that there are places that I need to line, but I don't necessarily like to see the black line on my gnomes. Now, it's okay on some of the other characters. You know, when, when I do, um, oh, I don't know, uh, little cartoon characters and things like that. But with my gnomes, I really don't like to use just a stark black for lining. And so one of the things I've started doing, and I really like it, is I'll take whatever color um, the item is, and you'll see this when, you, when I finish out this hat. So I took the yellow and I added a tiny bit of uh, darkening to it, which I think on this one I used, I think I actually did use a little bit of black. 
Um, you can also go with um, an opposite primary, which will, will darken your color up. Um, and then I'd use that to put in my lining and my shadowing. And uh, then you don't get that stark black, but you do get the darkening that you need so that you can see the, the, def the definition of, in this particular case, the creases in the hat um, is stitching, you might call it. Uh, if you wanted to take the time, you could actually put some stitching in it, um, something like that. So uh, that's what I've started doing instead of doing the black. I, I, I'll just do whatever color I'm going to use for shading. I will make sure that I darken it just enough that I can use it to actually show those edges and any place that um, there would be such as um, some type of stitching. And then that gives you your definition. And the thing is, once you get that put in, if you can put a tiny bit of shading on each side of that line, um, it, it gives it that illusion that uh, it, it's got a curved surface. Then right in the middle of that area, you want to make sure that's where you put your highlights, and especially at the top. And then that's going to give it a real, real fullness, a, a real pretty curvature to that particular place um, on your on your painting and with this being a raincoat and a rain hat you know those things are really shiny and so at some point I did put a little bit of white on there to see if I could really make it shiny and I, I didn't like the way it came out so I just made sure that it was a really 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 light yellow on those highlighted areas and then darkened um, where the shadows go in on the rest of it. And, uh, and I feel like it, it turned out good. I probably could have spent more time on it, but again, this is a rock and um, we're doing those, these things for fun. I hope that nobody is taking things so seriously that you stop enjoying, uh, enjoying this. So, so just, just have fun at doing this. Um, painting has got to be one of the most relaxing things I've ever done. And I hope that um, you're not taking it so seriously that you're not relaxing and enjoying it and having fun with it. So <clears throat> I thought that the turquoise uh, was perfect. I, I, it's almost uh, a Tiffany blue, I guess you could call it, was perfect to put in for his gloves, um, his galoshes, and for his umbrella. So uh, you can pick any color that you want. Um, this was just a, a pretty little pastel color that I liked. So uh, please, you know, find a color that you think brightens up your day and put that color in. You're gonna do the same thing with it that you did with the hat um, and the, uh, and the uh, arms of the, of the rain suit. Make sure that you get that. Shading in, get those highlights in. Well, I was working on the nose, and um, if you follow me at all, you know I do my noses exactly the same way every time. Um, I put in my, my dark, get the entire nose done in the dark. You want that to dry a little bit. Um, and then I go back in with a little bit of that same color. I add a lot of white to it. I get it very, very wet. And then I slowly add that to where my highlight's gonna be. And that should take care of the nose doing it that way. Sometimes I'll come back and I'll put some shading around the bottom or right around the very, very top of the nose, depending on what I want the hat to look like it's doing. If the hat's bunching up over the nose or if it's just sitting on the nose, um, I, will, I will either add more dark to it or I'll add more light, depending on what I want that hat to look like sitting on its nose. And of course, make sure that you're shading plenty underneath the edges of that hat. Um, I think at the end of this, and I'm not sure that I have it on the video, I went back in and I put a little more shading underneath the edge of the hat. I, I felt like it needed a little more shading. 
And like I do on all my gnomes, um, you can do it however you want, but what has worked best for me is I make sure that I get the entire thing painted. So I will paint his umbrella. I will paint in his, uh, you can see I put in the handle. I put in his gloves. I put in his galoshes. I even go so far as to highlight and put the uh, shading on those items and have them completed before I start putting in um, all of his beard. And the reason being, I want to be able to show that wispy hair going over the top of those items. It's really important because if you do that, once again, you have that layering of items. You know, you've got an arm and then you've got the, um, the handle of the umbrella laying on top of the arm and then you've got the hair on top of the handle of the umbrella. Like that illusion, those depths is what gives your painting the character and it keeps it from looking like a flat surface. So it's important that you kind of think that out a little bit uh, when you're getting ready to paint. What do you want to lay on top of what? And for me, I want that beard to be last or, you know, at least the last part of anything that it's going to touch um, so that that is the item that I know is going to show up on top. Now, on this one, we actually have four layers because I put in the arms and I put in the gloves and I put in um, the background of, of the dark for his beard and I got all of that in. Then I put the handle of the umbrella and I laid that on top of it. Then I'm going to actually put the beard in. And we're going to wisp that in and get it all filled out and get it nice and full, get it where we like it. And then on top of that, I'm going to add um, the uh, glove back in and the bottom of the umbrella. Here's why. Um, he's not going to be holding the umbrella in the middle of his beard. But I do need to have that in there so that I don't lose the proportion of where that hand actually meets the umbrella, um, the, the stick from the umbrella. So by putting it in and then painting over the top of it and then knowing exactly where that hand is because I can see through the beard, you can put it back in again. So I hope that makes sense. Um, let's see. This one I did with a little darker uh, beard than I normally do. I usually put a really, really light white beard, but I kind of liked him with a dark beard. So let's talk about the beard. Beards are pretty easy. Um, I put my base color, which is going to be the dark gray. I make sure that up underneath the edge of the hat, uh, we get it a little bit darker, especially around the nose. And, um... Then I take my lining brush, and um, maybe I'll show you this on, on the next one that I do. It might be easier to show you than to tell you, but I have my black, I have a pile of gray, and then I have a pile of white. And what I do is you make sure that it's, it's not dried out at all. I, I use brand new splotches of paint before I start the beard. And I'll drag that lining brush through the black and then I drag it through the white and then I start putting it in. And then I, every time I go back to my paints, I do that same process. Drag it through the black, drag it through the white and then put it in. And it will be, it's amazing how full it makes your beard look when you do it that way. And make sure that your lining brush is really thin. I mean, you want to have a very, very, very tiny uh, line. And so by doing that, um, you're pulling two colors and they're even thinner because um, half your brush is white and half is black. Now you don't have to get too you know, crazy about making sure that, you know, you run one side through the black and one through the white. It's not like that. 
I just run it through, run the black through, then run the white through. You will be very surprised once you start playing with that, that it goes on. Now, once I get it, you know, the basic shape, I will now go in and I will run my thing through the gray and the white. And once I get those put in, you decide which direction you wanna go. Do you want a beard that's more white or do you want a beard that's more dark? And at that point, that's when you just do a single color. And by that point, you've got quite a bit of paint mixed up in all your colors. I just still swipe it through. So on this one, when I swiped it through, I swiped it through the white, but I picked up enough of the black and the gray from um, you know doing the same process earlier. And it gave me as much white as I wanted, but it also gave me that very thin line because um, I was, each line is being divided by two colors. So it gives you, even though you're making a wide line, the illusion is it's two different colors. So it's even a narrower line than what it would be if it was a solid color. I hope that makes sense. And maybe on my next gnome, I will actually show you how to do that because it's, it really is a, a great way to get that beard in there. So let's see, once you uh, get that beard laying in there and I got his little gloves back on, I did extend his, um, his uh, rain jacket a little bit. The arms look too narrow. Uh, we're gonna go back and we're gonna work on that umbrella. And super basic. You know, I just put in the little um, top part that you see so much of. And then I put darker underneath to show the underside of the umbrella. You'll see here, I left this in. I could have cropped this out, but I left it in. Um, I wanted you to see, <laughs> I make mistakes too. And I got that one side just a little bit low. So since it was still kind of wet, I was able to take um, one of my short brushes with some water, kind of scrub it a little bit, and uh, pull that off with a, a, a piece of paper towel, a corner of clean paper towel. And then I was able to go back in and put my line a little bit better. Um, to be honest with you, it, it still was a little bit longer, a little bit wider than I wanted it to be. But again, um, you know, it, it's my rock and I think that it, it didn't take away from uh, this little guy at all when you see it finished. Uh, if you didn't see me do it, you probably wouldn't even noticed. Um, it just kind of drove me a little bit crazy because I didn't like it the way it was. Um, but anyways, uh, that's a real basic umbrella. We're also going to put some lines in on this and we're also going to do some shading on this. Um, I did tip this one with some black uh, only because... I tried to dark, darken up the, um, the blue, that, that Tiffany blue, and I started getting some weird colors that I didn't like. Um, and so I, it, you can see right there, that's part of it. It almost went gray, and I, I really didn't want gray along the edges because I've got gray underneath showing the underneath of the umbrella. I was afraid if I used it to line also along the edge that it would, um, it would blend is what I was afraid of. So I did pull a little bit of black for that. And then we're going to just put some shading along that lines, those two lines, um, as well as around the edges and of course the bottom of it. And then um, anytime you shade, you always have to highlight uh, because you're never gonna shade down dark enough, uh, at least for me, I, I lose my color if I do that, if I shade too dark. So I, I like to kind of meet in the middle and shade down at least one or two shades um, and then highlight up one or two shades. And then the whole middle, everything in between is your true color. And then that makes me feel pretty comfortable. I, I, you get to keep those really pretty colors um, and still, be able to show, you know, your highlighting and your, and your uh, shading. So, 
I think he's really turning out cute. Uh, let's talk about the rock. So I picked this rock up on our property. Um, and I will tell you that uh, when I picked it up, um, it had all kinds of weird colors to it and striations. And that's what you're seeing up there along uh, by his head. And I really debated on whether to put like a background on this so that you couldn't see that. It also had a lot of um, texture to the rock and it was very porous. So I went ahead and sprayed it twice with a sealer before I started painting. Uh, when I did that, I kind of thought that the different colors of the rock up by his head was was kind of cool. So I left it. And, and you know, those colors just didn't come out until I sprayed it. So I was really glad that I had sprayed this one. Um, that way you can really see how that, how those colors come out. I don't know. I, I, I guess you could, you could really go out on a limb and say, well, it looks like it's kind of cloudy, but I, I don't know. It, I just thought that it, it, it had kind of a cool look to it. So um, my, uh, the base of that, um, umbrella as it's coming down over his shoulder and into his hand kind of blended with the beard. That's why I was messing with it and trying to put a, some lights and some darks in it so that you could see that. Uh, I used a couple of different greens to get them to show up there. They really didn't show up too good because of the rock being so dark, but I didn't really want it to take away from my picture anyway, so I thought never, it, it doesn't matter. And I'll tell you, I, sunflowers are my number one flower. Those are my favorites. Daisies are my number two. And so I thought, you know, a tiny, simple, single daisy would be perfect for this guy. Just something that reminds us that spring's around the corner, I know it's hard to believe when so many people have so much snow this year, but it is just around the corner. So simplicity. And so I just put in just a, a tiny little white daisy. Um, I don't know if you can see it on this. I, I don't know if I get close enough at the very end, but I do slap a little tiny bit of gray right in the middle of each of those petals. Um, I'm picking up the gray and the white as I'm putting them on there. And there he is. And I will be turning this to the side so you can see that umbrella wrapping around the edge of the rock. Um, I don't always like to do that, but this one was, it was appropriate. Well, thank you and you guys have a great week.